you tell me sir which is d axis which is q axis here generally the d axis nothing but the axis which flowing through the pole centers see here can you tell me is this is the d axis or q axis this is a d axis and can you tell me what is this axis the axis which flowing through the pole centers this is also called d axis this is also called d axis and when coming to here when coming to here yes so can you tell me what is this axis this is called d axis as well as and this is called d axis as well as these are the d axis and where is my q axis where is my q axis which is in quadrature with the d axis nothing but the phase shift between d axis and q axis is 90 degrees to each other yes so nothing but this is my q axis and this is my q axis yes or no guys are you okay are you okay are you satisfied with my what i written here this is my q axis these two are my q axis these two are my q axis the angle between q and d axis is 90 degrees is it correct or not yes this is 100% correct yes the angle between q axis and d axis is 90 degrees sir sir actually here it showing 45 degrees i am not discussing in terms of mechanical i am discussing in terms of electrical the angle between q axis and d axis is 90 degrees electrical what is the what is the formula theta electrical is equals to p by 2 times of or pair of poles times of theta mechanical theta electrical is equals to how many poles are there four poles 4 by 2 into theta mechanical what you are feeling mechanically 45 degrees so 4 by 2 nothing but 2 two times of the 45 degrees which is equals to 90 degrees yeah ultimately this is 90 degrees and here also 90 degrees now now can you see here once in both the case in which the air gap length is uniform for example here stored or state or will be there and here also state or will be there like this state or will be there like this in which the air gap length is uniform let's see here here if this is a state or like this yes, if this is my state or see here the air gap length is more but here the air gap length is less here the air gap length is less yes sir no guys so in this case the air gap length along the q axis much greater than the air gap length along the d axis but when coming to here the air gap length is uniform along the d axis and q axis yes or no guys so here non uniform air gap are you okay guys non uniform air gap what you can write here uniform air gap will be there and if the air gap length is non uniform the flux distribution also non uniform non uniform flux distribution what is this the flux distribution generally the field winding will produce the flux which uh, the poles will gives the flux to the armature here the flux distribution is more here the flux distribution is less but here the uniform flux distribution will be there but here non uniform flux distribution yes or no guys when the flux distribution is non uniform then emf is non sinusoidal i am removing this please when the flux distribution is non uniform then simply emf non sinusoidal here the emf is non sinusoidal non uniform air gap non uniform flux distribution then emf non sinusoidal uniform air gap uniform flux distribution then emf sinusoidal in which of the following case emf is sinusoidal in non salient pole in smooth cylindrical machine we can have a sinusoidal emf without any modification yeah okay sir 
Now, sir, I want sinusoid EMF even in salient pole also. So, what I have to do? To get the sinusoidal EMF in our salient pole machine, we need to we need to do some modifications here. Like a, the pole structure should be like this. We need to change the pole structure like this. This this modification is called chamfering. What it is called? It is called chamfering. So, what you can write here, by chamfering of the poles, what sir? By chamfering of the poles, we can get sinusoidal EMF in our salient pole machine also. But here, no need of chamfering. What is the use of chamfering here? No need. Simply no need of chamfering in our cylindrical machine. But we need chamfering in our salient pole synchronous machine. Then after. So final I will ask you one question. Which machine is more stable in between these two? Yes, can you tell me? Which machine is more stable? Sir, actually this is a sinusoidal EMF, right? That's why this is more stable. No, sir. The stability directly proportional to... Air gap, what I given you in the just a few, few seconds back, right? So, the stability directly proportional to air gap, in which the air gap length is maximum. Simply, in our salient pole, the air gap length is maximum. That's why the salient pole machine more stable than the cylindrical machine. Comparatively, comparatively, what sir? The salient pole machines more stable more stable because more air gap because of more air gap the salient pole machines are more stable these are less stable comparatively because of less air gap simply right so final question in this salient pole rotor which type of winding we are using in this cylindrical rotor which type of winding we are using of course, if it is a salient pole or cylindrical, the stator are having the same winding, short pitch distributed winding. When coming to rotor, in this rotor, which type of winding we are using? In this rotor, which type of winding we are using? Here, two points. Generally, where the winding structure denotes like this, winding structure denotes like this, that is a concentrated winding. Where the winding structure denotes like this with dot notations like this, that is a distributed winding, first point. And the second point, generally where the speed is minimum, where the speed is minimum, there we can use concentrated winding. Where the speed is maximum, there we have to use distributed winding. Otherwise, winding will be delocate from the slots. If the speed is more, the winding will be relocate or delocate from the slides, coming out from the slides. That's why, so simply, in our salient pole machine, what we are using, concentrated winding. But in cylindrical machine, what we are using, distributed winding. Which type of winding is this? This is a distributed winding. So these are the differences between salient pole and cylindrical. Generally in transformer, there is no any speed. We can use concentrated winding. No need to distribute the winding. Like that. Just try to remember. So, so finally, give me a conclusion for this. The salient pole and non-salient pole. Salient pole are smooth cylindrical. Okay, here in salient pole, more number of poles, less speed, more diameter, less axial length. Here, less number of poles, more speed, less diameter, more axial length. Turbo alternators, is it? No, 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 no. Hydro alternators and turbo alternators. Here, we need chamfering, no need of chamfering. Here air gap length is more, stability more, air gap length less, stability less. Concentrated winding, distributed winding.
and you know the theta electrical is equals to p by 2 times of theta mechanical and you know the basics generally how many number of poles are there that many of axes will be there if four number of poles is there then four axes will be there in that two are the q axes and two are the d axes generally okay so this is a basic concepts you know already i think Yes or no, guys? So this is the differences between salient pole and cylindrical pole synchronous rotors. Thank you, guys.